Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Wednesday. And look who jumped up right in time. It's Brassen of Brassen Strassen. It's Brass of Brassen Strass here at the Morning Toast on Hump Day, which is my favorite day to be in the presence of a Bryce or a Strass, because you know, after the show... <laughs> Things get a Things little get crazy a little, yeah. on oh, hump day. Yeah, really yeah. crazy. Bestiality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, speaking of bestiality, I had a dream I was in love with my horse. Where did you get this horse? And the horse's name was Odessa. Okay. Which is weird. Um, But like before bed last night, um, <laughs> we were like playing a trivia game and like one of the answers was Odessa. I don't know what that is. I think it's a city. Yeah, it is a city. Um, and that was my horse. And apparently, like, it was a horse from when I was a child. And I was reunited with the horse. And the horse also sang Elvis. Oh, that's the, I know why that is. Because last night I found out that it, Elvis comes out on HBO Max next week. Wow, you guys. it's Everything's coming up. Because also Top Gun is available to watch on demand now. And Elvis. So once I watch those two movies, I will be totally caught up. And I will be able to knock them off of my content plate. That's exciting. Check. 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 You're making check. a list and checking it twice. To take the Bedores down? No, no, wait. <laughs> no, his Countess said it. To take me down. Yeah. But taking the Bedores down sounds better. Yeah, it does. It's conflating the two. Yeah, the, the two franchises. Um, so that's here to say that uh, Elvis will be on streaming next week. And I definitely will be watching it because I just wasn't able to get my ass to the theater this time. Same. And I have one thing to say. You ain't nothing but a dog, dog player. player. I get it. Frog. Frog? Frog? Frog. Frog. I think Which she, I totally get, by the way. Like, I think she is saying frog. We were watching the music video this weekend, and I asked you if she was saying frog. And as an artist who's released music as well, um, I get, like, I get it. You know, frog. <laughs> Actually, yesterday was the three-year anniversary of a toast to the wow ones, a toast to the good li-. And, you know, we have so many new followers here because literally, like, we are the official podcast of TikTok. Um, and I don't know if like some of our new listeners know, I have some some bangers, actually just two. Um, and one of them was released three years ago yesterday. It's called Toast by Claudia Ashray, available to stream wherever you'd like. And it's pretty, um, sickening. it's pretty fire. Also, I noticed in the comments yesterday, we must have some new toasters because people were asking what Patreon is uh, and we never explain what it is. We're just like, go to Patreon if you want this, that, or the other thing. Wait, people want us to explain what Patreon is? We I, would love I to. <laughs> never ask. Okay, so Patreon.com, it's pretty much like OnlyFans, but it's just a different website where people do different things. A lot of podcasters use it and where we post bonus content. So we do five extra episodes a month. They're different from this show. It's not like the Fast Five. It's not what you see here. Sometimes it's vlogs. The podcast will get into like a specific subject. We'll get into beauty. Plastic surgery. History. History. We're constantly discussing history. Yeah. So we'll pick a topic and then expand on it. We also do a lot of general Q and A's and we also do probably two or three vlogs a month, depending on the month and what we're up to. So that's where you can like get to know more about us when you're watching the show and you're loving it, but you're like, who are these girls? Yeah. Who are the girls behind the mic? I want 200 more episodes right. from these girls where they're being more personal, more open. We've been saying 200 more episodes for like two years. I think it's probably 400 more episodes. No, here We could do the math. So and by the way, the Morning Toast podcast that you're listening to now is Monday through Friday, totally free, available wherever you get your podcast. So if you want to A, support your girlies, and B, pay $7.99, $7.99 a month for five extra episodes, it's patreon.com slash morning toast. And then you also get access to the Patreon community, which is like full of other toasters. And as a Patreon member, you get exclusive access to tickets, which brings me to my first point of the day, the pre-sale for my comedy tour, the second leg of Not Like Other Girls Tour, went live this morning. Um... For Patreon members. So Charlotte, we've got Seattle, we've got Portland. It starts at 10 a.m. local time. So, you know, the Portland and the Seattle ones haven't started yet. But Charlotte started, Durham started, Huntington, Long Island, New York started. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. And then general on sale for everyone starts Friday. And hopefully there'll be some good tickets left for you guys. Can't wait for that. And it looks to be about 250 episodes that we have. Just doing quick math, four years of doing the toast. But we started Patreon in May. We started the toast in April, four years five episodes a month and then 12 months a year 60 12. times four yeah and wow then, i'm <laughs> einstein <laughs> then um plus 10 episodes from may to now right right august cool yeah cool. albert's girlies yeah that's also something about us we're kind of like mathematicians no we're passionate about of course celebrity pop culture and ourselves um, but we're also extremely passionate about 
the sciences, yeah, math, um, industry, yeah, revolution, physics. Claudia will never miss an opportunity to let you know that she was almost a physics major. Uh, excuse me, almost? No, I was a physics major. Until for a year. Weren't. For a year. Right, but unless you- So made, that year doesn't count? No, you only, what well, you majored in. No, 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 yes. no. I, I'm not saying I graduated with a major in physics. I'm just saying for a period of time, I was a physics major. I think that's completely factually accurate. Yeah. Sh- okay. Just don't even try to like strip me of my accomplishments because I will come for you. I will come for you. I'll come for that tiny little neck, okay? As long as you call it tiny, <laughs> it's yours. I'll wrap my big fingers around your tiny little neck, okay? How tiny is it? So small I could crush it. <laughs> We're also passionate about violence. We're also passionate actually about reading, which leads me to my next point, which is that the Redheads recorded last night and per usual, it was an amazing episode. These girls, they're just so wonderful. And the dynamic between the four of us, it's kind of like, it reminds me of the show Friends. It's like, everybody's obsessed. So it's bad if it reminds Every, you of the show Friends. Everybody's you hate Friends. obsessed. Like there's a character for everyone. Mm, I feel that. No, those girls, they've got charisma. They really do, and they've got smarts. Oh, speaking and of got you, opinions. Speaking me. of you and me. reading, what did I? You do? recommended the worst book. Okay, like the worst book. Here's the thing: you came to me for a recommendation. And I said to you, I don't really have what you're looking for, and I'm going to do something that I never do. And I said this, and I'm going to recommend something that I haven't read, something that's on my want to read list that has an interesting description that maybe you would like. You know, I'm not interested in the the details. All I know is that I ended up reading. Literally, I think the person who wrote this book sat down and was like, "How many annoying, dumb?" infuriating characters can I fit into one tiny little book? And you know what? It was quite a lot. I hated everyone. I hated the plot, the ending. Oh my God, so dumb. Oh, two stars. And usually I never finish. I never give books two stars because if it's that bad, I won't finish it. No, I give books two stars when it's really bad, but I made it to 50% and I'm getting that Goodreads book for my end of year. Grade. Right. And I just wanted to be able to say like, you know, definitively that right, the book you right. recommended was trash. And I didn't recommend it. I, th- I said like- we I were- would never have heard of it if it wasn't for you. Okay, we were brainstorming and I said, I'm gonna do something I never do, which is recommend a book I haven't read. So I, I don't wanna like trash the book, but I do like want people, like I don't want anyone to have to experience what I experienced. So like, <laughs> should I say the name of the I, book? No, because books it's are more personal than food. And like my two star books, like are some people's five stars. Yeah, no, it, for sure. It was called Greenwich Park. The description looked good and the cover was really pretty. Stunning. You know, also, I have a really hard time. Maybe this is you. I've, I read a, I've read like a bunch of books um, that take place in London and I have like a really hard time imagining it or really kind of understanding because I have no idea what these neighborhoods are. I don't know how far they are from each other. I can't really picture it unless it's written from the POV of an American, like something borrowed. Mm-hmm. Well, no, something blue. Ha- it takes place in London, but Darcy is there and she's American and she's like explaining it to me. Got it. So there's like a level of understanding you need to have to like know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, I feel that so many of the books that I read are based in London, especially because my favorite author, one of my favorite authors is Sophie Kinsella and she's a British girly and Confessions of a Shopaholic are all set in London. And I just go with it. Like I don't pretend like I know what they're Do you talking know what? about. Okay, so like I was reading this this whole thing. And like every cracker is a digestive. Jackie, do you know what? We want to go punting this weekend. Do you know what that is? No. So at first I was like, whatever, I'll figure it out. Like context. And then they like kept saying it. So I had to like click it, hold it down. It needs to go boating. Like who the fuck knew that? Dead yeah. ass. But you know, um, one of our favorite authors, Sally Hepworth is Australian and all of her shit takes place in Australia, but she does a good job of being like, oh, maybe not everyone is going to be Australian reading this. And she explains it like. Yeah. Or she'll be like, so I live here, but my family lives on the Gold Coast. And I'm like, so is, is that close? Near, far? How, wherever how you are, are. Uh, but I agree she paints a lovely picture of Australia stunning and I don't feel so out of the loop same so that was That's one of the many issues Leanne Moriarty writes from Australia too gorgeous place yeah um honestly when I think of Australia I think of this iconic short-lived reality show on Netflix called Instant Hotel mm-hmm where um, they had people um, compete who had like different Airbnbs, like, but like they were cool niche Airbnbs. Um, they had them all compete. Like they all stayed at each other's Airbnbs and like gave it a grade and then someone would win at the end. And it was just like, inc- I feel like I talk about this all the time, this incredibly annoying mother-daughter duo, Bondi. Her name was Bondi. And they had a condo in Bondi Beach. And me and Ben were 
obsessed and there was also this gay couple Leroy and um I forget his name and they were so obnoxious With the pillow yes and you always say I'm like him because yes. I have to bring like, my own pillow they case. were so snotty they went everywhere and like there was just some people who had like modest airbnbs and they put their whole life's work into it and Leroy and his partner who's I name I can't remember like we're so fucking snobbish like so disgusting the very last episode we get to their Airbnb and it's literally like a suburban home like in the middle of some random suburb with like a waterfall in front it was so janky and we're like you two have been so obnoxious to everyone and like this is what you were working with the whole time safe to say they did not win but justice for instant hotel bring it back yeah agreed I also think of our lips are sealed when I think of Australia of course iconic Mary Kate and Ashley that's the one that's the one I hope that they're happy with that portrayal of their country. Uh, they must be. It must be on some, you know, like list of approved media. When they, they were in the witness protection program in that movie, right? Yeah. So good. Yeah. And he was from a country called Yet Ugly. What? He was from. Who he, was? The, one of the guys who was like chasing them down. He's from Yet Ugly. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. And I'm sure in some recess of my mind, that's where Yet Andy comes from. Right. Yet Welcome. <laughs> What can I say except you're welcome. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you. So we had dinner at your house last night and we pretty much spent the entire evening trying to get Michaela to say Claudia. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it's a hard name to say and I'm trying not to take it personal that I'm the last person um, whose name she said, even though I've literally been in her house for almost two weeks. Um, and when she went to bed last night, you know, Zach Shapiro picks her up and then like hands her to everyone to say goodnight. And she like laid in my belly and I, she literally whispered in my ear, Claudia. <laughs> I swear to fucking she's God. She's like gaslighting you because she won't say it publicly and she's like not going to, she's going to make everyone think that you're crazy mm -hmm. by saying she said it. And mm -hmm. we're like, no, she hasn't. We didn't hear it. The cool thing about Olivia um, and Zach is that they're not emotionally manipulative like us and they believed me. That's good. I was like, you guys, she she literally like leaned in for a hug. Claudia. Kind of like, you know, like a child in a scary movie. Like, Claudia, yeah. the power of Christ compels you. And then she went to bed and I haven't seen her this morning because I woke up. Do you feel up. different now that it happened? That's really been your goal. You know, I don't feel different. If anything, I'm just like, that was it. <laughs> you didn't want to say that, Claudia, I love you so much. Thank you for being an amazing auntie. Yeah. It's fine. That's next. We're working out our differences, me and Michaela. Eden Sassoon. The, the Lisa Rinna to my Eden Sassoon. Yeah. And that's a Patreon joke. So if you don't get it, join Patreon. Speaking of Eden Sassoon, so I'm reading this book. Oh, yeah. Uppercut by Carrie White. And she's a celebrity hairdresser back in Much the 60s. Much like Vidal. And Vidal's all over it. Really? Like here and there, actually. It's not main character or anything. But like she talks about, you know, the other people around her. Like this person came from Vidal. What's Vidal doing over in the UK? He's doing these like blunt haircuts. That's the inspiring posh. looks here. That's so interesting. Vidal Sassoon is such an interesting like... um celebrity you know and does that hair care brand still exist for sure yeah it's no paul mitchell but they're all pretty good yeah that's do you think eden success. sassoon has a lot of money from the vidal sassoon legacy i believe this is googleable so and did she have other siblings that she had to split I it with i feel like she probably has siblings vidal sassoon net worth yeah net worth Oh, I think there's a Vidal Sassoon documentary. He has a net worth of 200 million. Wow. And so. And he's not alive, right? Um, I doesn't, I'm not seeing. Oh, who did he leave his money to? Oh, great oh, question. Great question. And oh, Eden, and, and also the next question is how much is Eden from and Eden Beverly is his daughter, Hills? daughter, right? Yeah. He has two surviving children. Oh, 100 and million his each. fourth wife, Rhonda, were entitled to the entirety of his state and assets. Ooh, fourth wife. That throws a wrench in the whole thing, you know? Yeah, so they say Eden's net worth is 20 million. Nice. But she's also an entrepreneur, so she might have, like, put, you know... Lost all the money in some dumb venture <laughs> some, about like, crystals. Some, jewelry line. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. That that <laughs> tracks for sure. Um, yeah. So that's your hair history lesson of the day. Yeah. We've got a great show. It's Wednesday, which means we're doing Dear Toasters, which is one of my personal favorite segments here at the Morning Toast. Our advice segment at the end of the show, we will read three prompts from three toasters in need of our help, and we will do our absolute best to deliver some really sage and sound advice. Um, If you ever want to write in, it's deartoasters at gmail.com. Totally anonymous. You can write in about literally anything you want. Literally. Literally. Can't guarantee it'll get chosen. No, no. I mean, if it's good, and do, please don't be writing essays. Like, this episode... Our episodes, like we try and keep them like around an hour. If you're writing me a whole Megillah, even if it's the craziest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life, I can't read it. Yeah, but if you love Dear Toasters and like, or you're feeling shy about your Dear Toasters, every so often we do a Dear Toasters Patreon episode where it's all Dear Toasters from requests from our Patreon members so you have a better chance of getting selected. We can be a little more long-winded. Mm -hmm. It's a great time. But for the main show, like keep it tight. Only need to know information, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Nothing's that important. So without further ado to do to do, even though he isn't here next to Bruta do to do. Theo's here. Oh, yeah. You guys, we shipped down the Theo pillow to Jackie's Florida studio so that when I'm back in New York, I'll have a piece of Bryce with me. She'll have my Bruno pillow and I'll have her Theo pillow and then we'll have our real dogs. And so everyone will be together. So I guess this is the official, you know, passing of the baton. Now I've got brass and stress on my chair. Brass and stress and brass and stress. You Every, know what? Everyone's like, you need a centerpiece for the table right no. here. We have one. Yeah. We have one right now. You know what? Uh, Brief observation before we dive in. I feel like in our Florida episodes, in our Florida eras, we have- We're in our Florida era. 100%. We have not sang that much. Maybe that's why why our numbers are so high. (laughs) I wonder why that is. And I do want to thank everyone for um, the nonstop work they've been doing to subscribe to us on YouTube. We're getting much closer. I think we're at 95K. And when I started this whole journey a couple weeks ago, like we were so far, we were at 80. So bullying works. And that's the lesson from today's episode. Um, And I'm feeling really good about it. Like also I, a bunch of YouTubers who um, listen to the show have actually reached out to me with like some growth hack um, tips and tricks and one okay. of those is uploading to youtube shorts mm-hmm. which i do I, that which i do believe has really helped our growth um so i don't know which it is the bullying or the shorts but i'm gonna continue to do both fucking subscribe you ugly wench if you're listening as a podcast even if you're in your car when you get to your destination pull out your phone i'm talking to you in your car who's like no she's not talking to me sarah listen up if your name is sarah and you're driving in your car listening to this podcast when you get to your destination you have to describe to you subscribe to youtube and we can see the names yeah. and if it's not all sarah's today yeah like you're done there'll be no episode tomorrow <laughs> we will we will withhold our talent until we hit 100k that's what we should do no more episodes <laughs> until 100k and that would mean only like five or four thousand of you have to get on your gmail and subscribe i think that's a good idea and not desperate at all <laughs> and has no ability to backfire nah. okay so now without further ado to do, 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 do it is time for the fast five stories that you to do, do, do need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast and today's episode is brought to you by clinique If you have dark spots, it can often feel like a vicious cycle. As soon as one fades, another one will pop up, but you can break the cycle with the Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. This powerful serum works on melanin-rich to fair skin and helps visibly correct dark spots, such as acne marks, while protecting from future discoloration. So I'm a dark spot girly, especially um, in the summer. It brings out like these dark patches under my skin and I find them to really bother me. Um, And I've been using Clinique since last summer, actually. I maybe, I can't remember when I started, but there's a visible difference. And I thought it was just one of those things like you just lived with, like you didn't, there was no like fix for it. Um, And there is an action, really have not struggled with it in the last couple of months, thanks to Clinique. 94% um, demonstrated an improvement in radiance and visible skin tone, including acne marks, in eight weeks. You can see a 39% visible reduction in dark spots in 12 weeks. It features their proprietary brightening molecule and vitamin C for a more even looking skin tone, including acne marks. One thing about me, it's like, if you're putting vitamin C in your skincare, like I will be purchasing. There's Mm -hmm. just something gorgeous about it. Yeah. And I know this is like not scientifically or factually correct, but it makes me feel tan. Interesting. Is it because there's something that harnesses the power of the sun? Yeah, and it's just like maybe it's a mindset. It's like a placebo. It's a state of mind. Yeah, Um, their powerful brightening serum for melanin rich to fair skin to visibly improve uneven skin tone and interrupt the look of future dark spots. So you can get even better clinical dark spot interrupter today. Available at Clinique.com. Clinique is spelled C L i n i q u e dot com for the even better clinical dark spot interrupter. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bolin Branch. Bowl and Branch uses the best 100% organic cotton threads on earth for a superior softness and a better night's sleep. Their sheets aren't just buttery, breathable, and impossibly soft to start. They get softer with every wash. We are bold. This is a Bowl and Branch house. Yes. My apartment in New York is a Bowl and Branch house. I don't like to stay in a room that is not a Bowl and Branch house. Thankfully, I'm staying at Olivia's, which is a Bowl and Branch house. I have the signature collection. I think that's what you have too, That's right? what I have. That's what I have in my bed here now. That's what I have in my guest room for you. And everybody loves it. It's for everyone. It's the signature hem sheets from Roland Branch. It's their bestseller for a reason. They use the highest quality threads on earth for a superior softness and a better night's sleep. Their sheets are made with threads so luxurious. They're beloved. They have been beloved by three US presidents. Not us being presidential not us sleeping in the president's bed (laughs) they feel buttery to the touch so you can get 15 percent off your first set of sheets when you use promo code toast at bowlandbranch.com 
when it comes to bed, like this is where you don't skimp out. Like no. you get the best of the best and Bowl and Branch is the best. And our 15% off with code toast will help you achieve, achieve the bed of your dreams. So Bowl and Branch is B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com promo code toast. Amazing. Thank Remember, you. Remember like when we were in school growing up and teachers would like lick their finger. So unnecessary. To get um, like the pages to stop sticking. While obviously now in COVID like that's disgusting it's also just like i remember being like get your fucking tongue away from me wench like yeah. it was so such wenchy behavior it was such a violation yeah it was and just like something about their particular tongue something about like a school room just made everything dry you no, know but like that is just unnecessary and then sometimes like if you got your paper and you were the top one that had like the mark on it it was moist yeah you had a <laughs> fingerprint and i know we have a lot of teacher toasters so i just i'm curious to know think, if that fad I think, has i don't think contemporary teachers do that me neither. I, I hope. I pray. I, I wonder what that was about. Because yeah. it's like people handle paperwork all the time, but only teachers licked, licked it. their fingers. Yeah, no. And their like glasses would be at the bottom of their nose and they would be licking. And it was just like, it was really as if school wasn't traumatizing enough. <laughs> that was, um, that was really unnecessary. Now that I think about it. Great. Not cool teachers. Not cool. Core memory. A hundred percent. Like I'm, do you have a teacher in your mind right now who you're like remembering do it? No. Oh, I, I am. You just have like a favorite teacher who yeah. you put everything on. Jackie, it's that teacher who I spoke about in my Dirty Jeans comedy special. Yeah, you just Even love the naming her for all your life's trauma. Behind the scenes tip. The name I used in my comedy special is not her real name. They said I could get sued if I did. Even though like it was a positive story for her. Um, but no. Yeah. Only real ones now. Okay, now are you ready to get into the stories? They're actually pretty good today. Oh, I had uh, I had sent you a story from Vulture, from Vulture. last night. Oh yeah, I didn't, I thought you wanted me to read it like for my personal life. You didn't say for the toast. Oh, I thought it was implied. It's fine because it's really niche. Um, but I just thought it was interesting. Do you want to just update us? So I feel like I've been talking about this a lot recently, especially on Breaking Bread, which, oh, we have tonight. It's yeah. today Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. We have Breaking Bread, but it's at five o'clock tonight. Yes, because Rolled comes first. Well, it wasn't working for me. and That's fine. And other people were like suggesting, why don't you move the time? So the time is now five o'clock Eastern time. Join us. It'll be so much fun. And then as always, it'll be available on Friday. And we support mamas. Yeah, we do. Um, Otherwise, I mamas get us I've been talking didn't support mamas <laughs> I've been talking about this story because I just find it really interesting even though I think it's like a niche side of TikTok about the Jake Novak story so for those who don't know this kid Jake Novak who makes like YouTube sh videos where he like sings and choreographs and writes lyrics to like he's trying to be funny um and one of his went viral on TikTok because he was basically making this video when he heard about all the people leaving SNL he was making like an audition for himself and like it was so cringy and like it went viral and everyone was like blowing him up but at the end of the day like he was just like you know doing his art you know he was putting himself out there he was putting himself out there what how did the song go you used to sing it all the time um I want to be the next SNL cast member so here's why I should be a contender. My name is Jake Novak. I don't know the rest okay. of it. Um, and then pe people just like went off. People became obsessed with the cringiness of it. Then started looking at some of his older videos, resurfacing like this cringiness. Um, there was like, I think he didn't do anything wrong. And like the hate that he got was so, like the magnitude of it was so crazy compared to like, he was just like putting himself out there. Like maybe he thought, I could just see his grandma being like, what if you just made a video for Lorne? Right. Um, and it was like, it was earnest and it was sweet. Um, but then like, you know, some of his old videos, like he did a, one about like school shootings and it was like really um, insensitive, you know? Children dying in the schools. Like it was really weird. Um, but again, like I think his intentions were pure, you know? Okay. He was just trying yeah. to like make art. Yeah, it's not malintended. It's right. just not. But the way the internet Not. ascended upon him, like, and descended, so, descended. Thank you. He is like his real job is um, he's a performer, a singer in like a barbershop quartet at Disneyland. And people were like showing up and like harassing him. It got so out of control. And he posts videos once a week, every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And he has not been heard from since that SNL video, which was seven weeks ago. So now the narrative on TikTok has changed. Like hashtag, where is Jake Novak? Yeah. And people have been speaking out. Like you guys literally bullied him off the internet, showing up to Disneyland. Like you guys are evil. And it's just like obviously now the conversation has changed but vulture landed an interview with the mysterious jake novak and he told them everything he was like this has literally been the worst time of my life like people harassing my family members literally people like were this is really sad like people were reaching out to him making fake emails and fake websites pretending to be lauren michaels like and i think for a while like 
it, it got really sad and really and really bad. And it's just like it's an interesting case study on like virality on the internet. Yeah. Um. And his interview with Vulture was um. It was really sad. And then of course like he had old tweets. So everyone's like, no, we don't feel bad for him, which is not like a valid um thing for a normal human being to say. So it's just been like a crazy journey that I think we've now come to an end with. Like we've heard from Jake Novak. He got an interview on Vulture and it was really interesting to read everything that he's been through since this one dumb, cringy, but not evil video came out. That just made me like really sad. That's why I sent it to you. I thought you would find it interesting. It was like, I had to read it on reader view and yeah. um, I was just doing something else that I can't remember. And I wasn't invested in the story to begin with. And now I'm depressed. No, it's really, it's like, like, it's a terrible story. me with them showing up to his barbershop quartet. I know. And I saw a video of him and his barbershop quartet. And he was like having so much fun. I want to cry. No, I know. He was obviously just like passionate about his art and took it a little too far, which haven't we all taken our art too far? Hello, The Morning Toast. It's called being an artist. It's called being an artist. Didn't Da Vinci cut his ear off? And it's just sad. It's really He's like a modern day Da Vinci. Or was it Van Gogh? Van Gogh cut his ear off. But he is a modern Da Vinci. That too. So I just thought you'd find like the end because I've been talking about it at least personally with you so much. Yeah. I thought you'd find the end of the story quite um quite interesting. I'm upset. I know. I wish I didn't know this. I'm sorry. It it was upsetting for sure. The internet is so Evil. disgusting. Like, why can't we just leave it on the internet? That's the thing. It's like you want to write like your funny mean uh, like comment about the cringiness whatever but to show up to his work to make these fake emails like get a fucking life and then of course it like always get spirals life. into like death threats telling him he should kill right, himself right, like of course why why did i like the video no did it make me cringe to the largest extent yes would i ever message him you should kill yourself like people are not okay no i mean people aren't okay it's so sad that's just really not the foot, the foot I want to start. I'm sorry. On. I'm sorry. I just, I forgot to talk to you about it this morning. If you had added it to the docket. <sighs> well, I didn't. So what did you add to the docket? docket? We actually have some, some really good stories today. So okay. first up, Demi Lovato is using she, her pronouns as well as they, them now. So Demi Lovato is back to using she, her pronouns a year after coming out as non-binary and sharing her preference to go by they, them. The singer shared on the Spout podcast Tuesday that she came to the decision. Love podcast making news. Of course. Haven't heard of this particular one. Me neither, but I will be subscribing. Because we subscribe. And we support other podcasts. Like uh, a step forward for one podcast is a step forward for all podcasts. Agreed. Um, she came to the decision because she is, quote, such a fluid person. Okay. Further, explaining why she previously adopted they, them, she said her energy last year was, quote, balanced in my masculine and feminine energy. Quote, when I was faced with the choice of walking into a bathroom and it said women and men, I didn't feel like there was a bathroom for me because I didn't feel necessarily like a woman, the singer added. I didn't feel like a man. I just felt like a human. Lovato said choosing to identify by they, them pronouns pronouns at one point for her was about feeling human at your core. Then she said, quote, recently I've been feeling more feminine and so I've added she, her again. But I think what's important is like nobody's perfect. She said, everyone messes up pronouns at some point, and especially when people are learning, it's just all about respect. Okay, I really can't stress enough how much I appreciate that because obviously, like, I try and keep up with everyone's pronouns, but not I'm not always going to get it right. And, like, sometimes, especially, like, you know... Um, you know, the certain type of internet user, like usually like white women, like thinking they're mm-hmm. saving the, the earth. Like when we talk about Halsey or we talk about Trisha Paytas, I know both of them go by she, her, and they, them pronouns. So more often than not for me, like I'm going to go with she, her, just because it's simpler for me to remember. And a court, like they say it's fine. So I use it. Um, Halsey goes by they, them. Like I'm intentionally out here trying to undermine someone's identity, which is not the fucking case, first of all. So I appreciate, um, and I feel like whenever she talks about her pronouns, she always throws that in at the end. Like I understand people are gonna like take a minute to adjust. And I appreciate that because it could be, especially when like you talk about celebrities for a living and you talk so fast and like you're not always thinking what pronoun they identify as. Um, I appreciate the the leeway um, she gives us here. Mm-hmm. And always wanting what's best for Demi, you know, like live your life, girly. Yeah. Do what you got to do. I'm curious if you've seen any, what the people are feeling about this decision. Well, Demi Lovato is just currently like not in a well-liked phase of her career. And of course we all know it started with the, with the diet, um, frozen yogurt. Right. Um, so I don't think people really have like, people really care 
not care, but like, I don't think people right now are discussing, discussing whether, you know, Demi's pronoun, like, I don't think that's what people are talking about when it comes to Demi Lovato. I think they're talking about like, we're not into Demi right now. Got I it. think that's the general, and maybe I'm wrong, so I feel free looking, to correct me. Because I was curious what the temperature would be about this, because it doesn't seem like something that like one should do lightly. It's just like, today I was feeling this way, and tomorrow I'm feeling that way. And I feel like um, for maybe people in the trans or non-binary community, this is kind of like an affront to no. them that like, I'm going to be this today and I that understand. tomorrow. I and also like detransitioning is a huge deal. And we read a book about it for the redheads, Detransition Baby, and learn more about like detransitioning and like uh, the role that it plays like in the trans community. So I w- would imagine that like someone like her doing this in this way and just kind of being, it feels flippant about it. Okay, so I see how like you could see it that way. But I think, and again, I'm not a part of the community, so I don't know what the general consensus is, but I think they embrace fluidity, like gender not being like a construct and like almost like not having to abide by one or the other. And I think like they embrace that type of, I don't think they would see it as flippant. I think they would see it as fluid, which I think uh, the, you know, the non-binary community embraces. I think, again, I'm not non-binary and I don't know like a ton about how they feel, but I think that the general consensus from the community is like, do whatever makes you feel good whenever. Okay. I think. Okay. And if you're able to explain to us, like in the comments and like, not in a, you know, Karen, Karen sort of way. I'm genuinely curious. Like if this is. No, but I think the question that you were getting at that I do agree with is like, what is the non-binary community's thoughts on Demi in general as like, cause remember the, the trans community was like not happy about having Caitlyn Jenner as like a, you know, kind of not a spokesperson, but a representative for the mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. And is the non-binary community like happy, you know, to have Demi be like a very public face of pronouns and non-binary-ness. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think people like right now are like loving Demi. Um, I just think her public image has been like a little chaotic in the last couple of years and people might be fatigued by that. But I don't know if that also is- If that has anything to do, to do with, with this, this. And if it's, uh, you know, shaping how people view her decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am genuinely curious, so. LMK. LMK. Are you ready for our next story? Mm-hmm. Crazy celeb memoir news. Jeanette McCurdy has written uh, her memoirs. I've been waiting for Jeanette McCurdy to like dead ass spill every fact about her childhood in a concise way for a long time. She's alluded to it, but she's never really like been out there about it. Okay, well, her memoir is called I'm Glad My Mom Died. I did know that that was the name of it. I thought that was, you know, very uh, catchy. And she is on the cover holding an urn, a pink urn. Ooh. So I'm assuming her relationship with her mom was not Was not the good. Best. So um, Entertainment Weekly has received an excerpt from the book where she talks about her for uh, iCarly audi- audition like auditions before that mm-hmm. and how like it affected her mom she talked about one audition where she didn't get the job and how her mom like had a breakdown oh god then when she got iCarly like she thought it was going to be like the best thing ever oh. because finally her mom would be happy oh. and um oh that's really sad yeah it seems really really sad but this is the book it's on sale on August 9th so Soon. You should read it. Yeah. Well, that... Um, I actually might read it if I can find the time. Yeah. I wonder if the book is about mostly her relationship with her mom. I mean, even just that thing you just said, it's like so much pressure to put on a little kid mm-hmm. and can really fuck you up. So I imagine her relationship with her mom never, you know, got better. Um, and I, I do think that would be interesting to read. But also, you know, as someone of a Nickelodeon historian, like I'm extremely interested in the, you know... I don't want to say it. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't know why. Oh, you think that she'll talk about Well, I don't know if she him. will, but she, I think of all the people who are in public life post that Nickelodeon time, um, she's been the most vocal, but still not in a really kind of clear and lucid way. And a book is a great place to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And the quotes on the covers, Gerard Carmichael calls it impressively funny and Lena Dunham calls it an important important cultural document not to ruin the book for you no no um who's the first person gerard carmichael oh oh comedian um yeah lena dunham that's that's interesting for sure yikes (laughs) Yikes. um cool cool i do think it's interesting like you know iCarly is now i think they just got renewed for their third season in their like revival she's not a part of it it. though she's like available and of course 
Uh, but she's not interested. She also had said on a podcast years ago that like most of the time she spent doing that show, those shows, iCarly, Sam and Cat, like she was embarrassed for the content that was being put out. And you know what? Like respect because I agree. I agree. <laughs> You need to read this book. You need to report back because you're looking for books to read. I am. You like celebrity memoirs yeah. and you're always wanting to hear from Jeanette. Yeah, no. And um, there's like, this is a, a person whose story like I have followed for many years. So you will be reporting back on August 10th is I, what you're saying. I really wish her the best. I get the vibe that like her time on Nickelodeon was so damaging to her mental health. Like, and the fact that, and what I find so interesting about this whole Nickelodeon thing is like, there are people from the show who have like, very quietly like spoken out about it and like it was so damaging for them and then there are other people like Ariana Grande like she came from there too and there's like so many people who are thriving doing amazing and so many who are like the exact opposite so I just don't understand how that works well I imagine it has a lot to do with your family and like you're a child star and so it's like what is your home life like I think Ari's mom is like she's so close with her Mm -hmm. mom so she had a really good Support system. Support system. She has her brother who she's really close with. That's so true. But if you are like, you know, you have a stage mom and you are the sole earner in your family, like it can go the other way. Yeah. I actually remember watching a million years ago an interview um, that Kiki Palmer did about that. Like how being the youngest and like the, the income earner in your family is so toxic and like it can really, and more often than not, it does lead to like irreparable damage within the family. Yeah. So that must happen a lot with like child stars. Yeah, and I think Ari like also came from money, so it, they, she didn't have that. It wasn't pressure. as big of a deal, but like no, when when the when the kid is the one who brings you like out of a, a bad financial place, it's very toxic. Yeah, you know, Josh Peck talked a little bit about it in his book, but him and his mom, he was raised by a single mom, and they were like so close, and he was the one who wanted to go out for every audition, and she was like, "Are you sure? Are you sure?" And then when he started making money, like he he was so excited about it, just so he could pay his mom back. It was so sweet, like. And, and I think like to this day, like everything he does, like he does for his mom. It was really really sweet. sweet. Josh Peck's book is like one of a celebrity memoir that like I keep thinking about. It was so good. I really recommend. I absolutely have to read it because the thing about a celebrity memoir is like, even if it's not someone that you're so obsessed with, like I'm reading this Carrie White book and like, it's so good. I don't even know who she was. I didn't even know it was a celebrity memoir. Just Lauren Bossick said to read it. And it was Mm -hmm. like about, the subtitle is like my glamorous life in Hollywood. And I'm like, great, here I go. Yeah. I thought maybe it was fiction. I didn't know. Um, So I think that when someone has a story to tell anyone, doesn't even have to be a celebrity. Someone you're a fan of. It's just a memoir. Yeah. It's worth reading. Right, like Josh Peck's had like so many layers. Like, of course you want to read about the Drake and Josh of it all. And that was super interesting. But like the four years where he was like, had a terrible addiction problem, then the weight loss, like there were so many layers of Mm -hmm. it. It was so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll be reading this. And he's funny, like. You'll be reading it, yeah? um, I'm gonna try, yeah. Okay. I haven't been in like my celebrity memoir, you know, mood recently, but there are many I want to pick up. Like I've been meaning to read the Colin Jost one for like a thousand years. I've heard it's good, but I just never even like, I never, I never even like start typing it in my Kindle. You know what I mean? I think you should read that. No, no. Wait for, I was going to say you should read that today because you're a book a day and Mm -hmm. you just finished a book that you hate, but I don't want you to read a memoir and then like get fatigued because you need to do the homework on this one for us. Okay. 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 Are you ready for our next story? Which is so sad. Like today's episode is just depression. Okay. What is it? Ferris Bueller actress Edie McClurg is a victim of elder abuse her family claims you know her from Ferris oh my Bueller. god of course yeah just google her you'll what was remember her role her. she was like the school secretary yes oh my iconic bob like she had the tracy turnblad hair yes or did tracy have her hair <laughs> Ooh, great question but the family of actress edie mcclurg has claimed that she's a victim of elder abuse in court documents seen by the post the family of the star who lives in la and suffers from dementia alleged that she was abused by a man claiming to be a longtime friend who reportedly attempted to take her out of California to marry her. The documents filed in the Superior Courts of California named the abuser, the alleged abuser, as Michael Ramos, who has reportedly been living at her home since 2017. She is 76 years old. According to the documents, he is unemployed and does not pay rent or any expenses and was able to finagle his way into her life, reportedly attempting to move her out of California in order to marry her despite her dementia diagnosis. Stop. The documents also claim that he allegedly, quote, sexually assaulted <gasps> her current caregiver with a report filed with the LA Police Department. In addition, the caregiver was worried that he has or may be assaulting the conservatee and that she may not even know that it's happening to her. Oh my God, stop. Wait, um, this is literally the worst story. Why? Wait, I'm like so upset. Elder abuse, of course, any abuse is horrible. 
but there's something particularly evil about elder abuse. Yeah. Whether it's like financial, physical, sexual, and this sounds like it's all three, um, is so fucking evil. If I ever meet this man in a dark alley, like I will literally, I would kill him. Like that's so fucking evil. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I'm upset to any person, like not even the fact that she's famous. Like, and you know what's so sad is like elder abuse is extremely common. Yeah. And we're only hearing about this because she, she's, she's like some, a yeah you could say Ferris Bueller and celebrity yeah very this is so upsetting so upsetting at the very least I hope it shines a spotlight though on elder on abuse. elder abuse but I agree anybody who would take advantage of someone who's, who's elderly so vulnerable who like can't defend themselves and also doesn't even have the presence of mind right is disgusting evil, evil. should burn in hell yeah for real that was like that story remember from a few years ago of the coma patient who was pregnant of course that was a story that changed the nation yeah oh my god also stories that change the nation i was on tiktok and i'm telling you they tell you you don't find out anything interesting on tiktok not true have you heard about carolyn bryant Mm -mm. okay you know the story of Emmett Till, the 14-year-old boy during um, yes. the Civil War? Okay, so- I saw that she emerged from her house. She's alive. I didn't even know that. And the Daily Mail got paparazzi pictures of her. She's like 94 or whatever. And now people are saying like, she she's in hospice. Mm-hmm. So it's like, are we gonna, um, is, should, should they prosecute her? Because she's like 95. And technically, I think when you're like a certain age or you're like really sick, they don't prosecute you because you're gonna die soon. But everyone's like, no, get her. Um, I, I could not believe that this woman was alive because I was just watching when I was in the airport, they were doing an interview with Whoopi Goldberg. She is um, a producer on it. They're making a movie about Emmett Till. And I was like, damn, that's so crazy. So like the story was like fresh in my mind. And then I'm like, wait, because you feel like this stuff happened so long ago. Yeah. This bitch is still alive. So people didn't know she was alive? Or like- she was just they, in hiding. I think the last sighting of her or last we heard of her was like 2004. Okay. Um. So nobody really knew if she died or what she was up to. But the Daily Mail, I guess, was like following her around and they got paparazzi pictures of her. That's crazy. It's crazy. And they say she's 94 in, in hospice. And in the pictures, she looked sprightly as fuck. I just want to say. Need to go look she looked like. And by the way, if you're in hospice, I don't think you're like walking around. She was walking her dog. And the Daily Mail like reporter went up to her and her son was there like standing in front of her. Like no comment, no comment. It's a crazy story. Like, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. How did the Daily Mail even know where to go? She lives in Kentucky. I don't know. The Daily Mail is crazy. Yeah. But, like, she's been like, obviously living completely under the radar for years. And I don't think anybody knew of, like, a physical sighting of her since 2004. Wow. But I guess they knew she was alive because, like, death records are public records. Right. Somebody has been keeping up with this. Um, and they found her. Wow. It was gave me such a chill. Like, it was such a crazy story. Jeez. is such a crazy story yeah well our next story switching gears mm-hmm. selena gomez will reboot melanie griffith's 80s comedy working girl say reports Cute. yes selena gomez is reportedly in talks to remake working girl the 1988 mike nichols directed comedy starting melanie griffith and harrison ford one thing about me these days like selena gomez is doing something boom support it subscribing i've been living for selena and i've been keeping an eye out for her too Oh, you've got to. <laughs> you got to keep an eye over Selena. I mean, this is a great, first of all, a working girl reboot. It's what the world needs, even though she's probably like working from home and Ooh, like. Oh, I hope not, it's not like a. She's not doing okay. No, it's because honestly, it has potential to be like. um, why Like can't, younger. No, wait, why can't I remember the name of that show? The one I loved on Freeform. Bold type. Bold type. It's That's giving, younger. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's giving bold type. Right. Um, I hope it's not like. COVID. No, but like if it's like 2022, she's working from home, girl. No, no. Hopefully it's like <laughs> she's fabulous in like a high rise in but some that's major not city. reality today. Like I think that the reason why Working Girl in 1988 was so it captured good, it captured the spirit of the Working Girl in 1988. And I think so many girls watch it and it's like, that's me with my sneakers and my right, heels. Like, right, right. The blazer, the suit. But that, you know, fashion girly energy doesn't really exist doesn't exist right now yeah that's so true oh no i'm upset maybe we need selena to bring it back 100 percent. um have they cast anyone else joan cusack who's playing joan cusack uh i'm not sure but it will oh, air also, on hulu according to entertainment weekly wait did you see that selena was hanging out with francia raisa the friend who gave her the kidney who like they haven't been friends for literally three years. And then they were out making TikToks like everything's fine. Oh, good. Yeah, that made me happy because that was nefarious. That was nefarious. And, like you couldn't say it without the a Selena friend who fans. gives you a kidney is a friend for life. Right, so what happened? But now the girlies seem to be doing really well. Okay, good. Together, which was a huge 
relief for me in my new Selenator era. But I think that also helps you in your new era because that was something that just like wasn't adding Sitting up. right. It wasn't yeah. sitting right. But now everything sits right. And we're all good. We're all good. We're sitting perfectly. I really look forward to hearing more about this project. Yeah. And Selena's partnership with Hulu has turned out to be extremely fruitful. Obviously only murders. Um, I'm loving this. Selena's just been killing it. I was actually um, scrolling TikTok, of course, yesterday and like a fan account was posting clips of her from Selena plus chef. Um, and then it really got me thinking like she has not dated publicly or at least like with a celebrity in such a long time. Like, Let me get out the list. Yeah. Let's, well, we have to add her to the list. Yeah, we do. I feel like she's extremely cautious of dating in the public eye and who she chooses obviously because oh, her relationship because <laughs> her relationship with Justin was so Which means tumultuous we already had this conversation where I said Selena Gomez and Michael B. Jordan I love that no Selena Gomez and Chris Evans was like they were briefly linked yeah not in any like confirmed way but ever since then it's all I can think about yeah there's really not really someone for her here and she's like so famous that she really would have a hard time finding a like a commoner Try a businessman bow. She needs, yeah, like a like um like a tech. She needs like an Evan Spiegel. Yeah. Evan Spiegel. Evan Spiegel is literally like the dream. Yeah, who's the CEO of Be Real? <gasps> Love. Except I don't think it's like successful enough for him to like have enough money. Or okay, her. But Sorry. Like she, wow, look at me. <laughs> him or her. Um like the next big thing, you know, or the CEO of TikTok or something, you know? Yeah. She loves TikTok. Oh, does she? Yeah. Maybe Taylor Swift's brother. Okay, Alexis. Is it a girl? I'm not sure. Mm. Because mm. images. Oh, no, it's a man. Is he cute? Like, kind of. Let me see. I can't really, like, see. But here he He's is. He's the with, CEO with of Be bike. Real. Extremely cute. He's fit. Perfect. Perfect. Found it. Selena. Set it up. Yeah, set it up. I like this Um, working girls. Like, Usually, like, I roll my eyes at reboots and stuff, but, like, this is cute. This is cute. I mean, you know what else is cute? Solo stove. Oh, yes. So oh, cute. now that you have, like, a full-on backyard, uh -huh. you can whip um, yours yep, out year-round. Yep, yep. Life's best moments happen around a roaring fire, and because, and a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove makes your outdoor moments even more memorable. So, prior to Jackie actually having a home in a backyard, we were Solo Stove, like, portable girlies. That's a great thing about Solo Stove. It's a smokeless fire pit. You can really take it with you anywhere. It's not heavy at all. Or if you are, you know, you have the luxury of having a backyard, it's perfect for year-round fires, which is what you're going to do now. Mm -hmm. um, you can upgrade your backyard with a solo stove fire pit and create story-worthy moments without the fireside fumes. Their stainless steel construction is designed to regulate airflow and burn more efficiently. So little smoke, you'll wonder how there's so much fire. It's the perfect catalyst for getting outside and spending more time with family and friends. You can build lasting memories around a solo stove fire pit. They are brilliantly engineered to be easy to use, and they're built to last. They're so confident that you'll love it. They offer a lifetime warranty and a third 30 day free return policy. Right now, you can get big discounts on all fire pits during Solo Stove's summer sale. You can use promo code TOAST at solostove.com for an extra $10 off. That's solostove.com, promo code TOAST for $10 off on top of their incredible summer sale discounts. Great. Thank you for that. Our fifth and it's final story show. is a real human interest story. Love. From People Magazine. Of course. Twins who married I twins saw this. and gave birth so to twins. Tw Twins who married twins gave birth to genetic siblings. They say they're, quote, wait, what? Yeah, because twins, identical twins have the same DNA. DNA. So if it's, you know, let's say it's Jane and John. Mm -hmm. Well, Jane and, it's Jackie and Claudia. Okay. Have the same DNA. Yeah. And so. Olivia and Margo. Olivia and Margo have the same DNA too. So if you do Jackie and Olivia, it's the same DNA. The brothers but isn't have, it a different family? No, no, no. Olivia? No. Okay, their kids are all, that was a bad example because now we're getting Oh, confused. I get it because their kids are 50% of yeah, each yeah, of yeah, them yeah, yeah, and yeah. their 50% are all the same. Right, right, right. So what does that make the two kids? Twins? Siblings. Not twins. Not twins. They don't have identical DNA. No, because it could have been any so wait, combo. Did of each couple give birth to single kids or twins? Singles. Got it. And so those two single kids have the exact same DNA. Yes. How has this never As happened siblings. before? I mean, you would have to find identical. Tw Maybe it's happened in the history of you the know, world. time, but there was no People magazine to source right. them and write it up in TLC to give them a show. You have to have identical twin females and identical twin males who all love each other enough to get married and have to kids. To get married and have kids. So the cousins are also siblings and the siblings are also cousins. Yeah. That is crazy. And this was something these 
twins did intentionally. Like yes. they sought out this result. It wasn't just happenstance that they both fell in love with identical twins. Yeah, they realized, you know, they said, quote, we were like, oh my gosh, our dream has come true. How lucky are we that we get to live it? The sisters had always wanted to marry identical twins identical twins and share their lives together the journey to start this heartwarming moment has been better than they could have imagined you know, it's like a weird dream to have you know some people dream of going to space becoming a pop star it's just weird to like dream of having kids who are 100 percent dna think matched when you're an identical twin you have interesting interests <laughs> yeah and like just your your take on life is different. Is different. You know, everyone has things about them that frame what they think about, mm -hmm. you know, what, how they live their life. Just, you know, random quirks about them. And for I think sure. being a twin is like a really big, I would say for me, it's like being a redhead. Like, yeah. has completely changed. Like, it's integral to who you are. Shapes who I am. For sure, for sure. Um, This is just a crazy story. I read the headline and I just, I didn't put together that the kids were like a match. Genetic this is sending twenty three and me like they're oh, they're spiraling. Yeah, over like there. they're they don't understand. This they're is in a tizzy. so crazy and weird. Um, but I'm happy, and I saw a picture of the families like you know, unique looking, and I think that's great. But also, what's crazy is they all look like twins, obviously, but they're not. I would be able to tell these people apart if I spent enough time with them. Right, right. But also, th yeah, yeah. And that's the true. kids' names are Jet and Jax. Jackson that, Claude. That just seems intentionally confusing. No, but they call him Jax because it's short for Jackson Claude. Oh, and they call him Jet for it's because it's um short for the Jets and the Sharks. Exactly. Right. Okay. Cool. 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 No, but they want like to be this one big happy family. Well, good because it's the one they got. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's definitely you know you can rely on People Magazine for finding shit like this, and for that we're grateful to them and the work that they do. We really do you think like a submission are. box on their website because like every time when I'm in an airport and I'm buying a magazine like I'm usually going to buy People because it's the biggest it has the best pictures and the best um yeah, crossword we'll, puzzle we'll find a submission like box. do they have like hey are you a freak like do you they're literally the modern day PT Barnum like <laughs> like how do they find they're always like man who was chained to a well for sixty five years comes out with a nineteen pound scrotum like they always find this crazy shit. Hey, are you free? <laughs> like, no, it's like those signs P.T. Barnum in the movie. Yeah, Greatest Showman. No, like he was putting up like freaks, dogs. <laughs> like he was. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what they do. But I want to know how do they um, source gather these their stories? Talent. They're hunters and gatherers. Yeah. How do they source the talent? Right. Because I know for a fact, like when you're watching Jerry Springer, like they have an ad like do you want to be on our show? Send an email. Like that's how they source the information. So I'm just curious what people's method of sourcing is. That's all I was saying. It's simply. I think though there's a box that says, hey, are you a freak? A hundred percent. If you scroll you the website. What? Who isn't a freak? Such a good Who's call. Who's not a little freaky sometimes? Well, we're about to find out in Dear Toasters, our weekly advice segment, where we try and help three forlorn toasters come to the conclusions that they need to come to. Mm -hmm. So deartoasters at gmail.com is the email if you want to write in. Thank you to everyone for being, you know, open and vulnerable with us in this time. And let's dive in. Hey, Jackson Claude. Hey. Love you guys and needed to write in to ensure that I'm not overreacting. About a month ago, my husband and I moved to a new state and made a group of friends in our neighborhood. These friends are all mostly couples and we really hit it off. The husbands and boyfriends in the group decided they wanted to take a weekend trip fishing. Flash forward to the weekend of the trip, while the wives and girlfriends are at the neighborhood pool, one of the girlfriends mentions how their man took mushrooms and coke on the trip. All the other women began to talk and joke about how their men had told them about it and how they thought it was so funny. Meanwhile, I'm completely shocked as my husband didn't mention it at all. I was seemingly the only wife who hadn't been told. Naturally, I discreetly texted my husband and asked, and within a few minutes, one of the other wives gets a text from their husband. It basically says he was just told by my husband that I wasn't happy about the drugs. She announced to the group what the text said and completely embarrassed me. My husband says he did not partake and he didn't mention it to me because he didn't want to get in any get anyone in trouble as he didn't know that the other husbands had told their wives. Do I have the right to feel like my husband lied to me? Why would he have more loyalty to these new friends than he has to me? I'm frustrated by the whole situation, but I also struggle with coming off as a losery wife. Oh. Hell, sincerely a toaster who is avoiding the neighborhood pool and her husband today. Wait, I know you're like mad at like the husband thing, but like I would be more mad that he literally like ratted on you to the other women. Yeah. That's what I would be mad about. Who cares if you're the losery wife? By the way, being the wife who doesn't want her husband doing mushrooms and coke, like that's it's completely crazy. Fine. Like N that's fine. Yeah. What would bother me is like you got a text from me showing my concern about something and you showed it to all the other guys. That's like, like an invasion of privacy. That's just like 
it's a lapse in judgment for assuming he's a good man and you love him and I'm sure that he is those things because he's your husband it's a lapse in judgment where he got carried away like you know this is a new group of friends like I'm gonna show them like my you know I got the ball and chain yeah, at home right. look how she feels um and that's you need to be like never again like that's, that's a, him not considering you at all like how that makes you look how that makes the other women feel about you like that part would piss me off more yeah than the drugs thing the drugs thing wouldn't piss me off because I could have like if it were my husband first of all Maybe he didn't know about it going into it. He's not going to do it there. And when he comes home, he'll be like, by the way, the guys did this and that. Right. He doesn't need to like report to you and be like, mom, there's drugs on the trip. Like, right. I, We're grown I, people. I personally wouldn't think so, especially if he's, if he's not doing it. But if he's doing those things and wasn't going to tell you like till after, I think that's a little dishonest. But if it's just there, I think it's totally fine that he didn't tell you yet. I would assume though, eventually he would. Yeah, no. And I guess like maybe you're not upset about the text thing, but like I am. That really would bother me yeah and then like the other girl like reading it i didn't send a text to the group right the other girl text to you the other girl reading it like out loud to everyone like that's so fucking obnoxious of her by the way but it's 100 percent your husband's fault and like you need to explain that to him and i'm all for you guys like having this cup like you move to a new place you found couples that you like you have like the girls and the guys the sharks and the jets but something about this is like a little um like high school agreed and I just think you should keep your friends and and whatever but just mentally like take a, a one sliver of a step back from yeah. this don't get too involved with all of this it really showed you like the negative side of the group so just keep that in mind like you don't have to not be friends with them anymore but like I wouldn't tell everyone your deepest darkest secrets because obviously this group is fucking chatty as fuck yeah but it sounds like a fun group you know like fishing pool mushrooms coke fun 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 sounds like a book it does. And that's like the first red flag thing that happens where like the bitchy girl in the group, her name's always Margo. It's always Margo. I knew she you were going to say like, that. like, did you tell your husband, blah, blah, blah. And, and like, you're embarrassed. But you're like, no, Margo didn't mean it. It was just miscommunication. Right, right. She would never, Margo. Next thing you know, Margo's bar- burying a body in the woods. 100%. That's Who, always how it happens. That's always how it happens. And it's always Margo. All right, next up. Hey, ladies, I'll try to keep this short and sweet, but I've got a situation on my hands. My fiance and I are getting married in September, and my fiance's parents have graciously agreed to pay for our entire wedding and honeymoon. I seriously can't believe I'm actually getting my dream wedding, and it's really all thanks to them. The only thing is, my boyfriend just nervously told me his parents will be joining us for our honeymoon. It is so nice that they're paying for everything, but them coming on our honeymoon is insane. My white hus- Lotus. The white Lotus. My husband agrees, but is also too scared to say anything. Do I suck it up? Everything is already booked, so it's just a horrible predicament I'm in, and I don't know what to do. Please help out a fellow Floridian toaster. Eek, that's like really manipulative. It's not a honeymoon. Yeah, no. And normally, like, I'm all for, you know, putting on a smile just to get what you want. Um, and if she was being like a monster about the wedding, I would be like, you know what? She's paying for it. Just like, shut up. But honeymoon is taking it a little too far I don't think there's one person watching uh or who would hear this story who would think that that's a normal thing to do no you absolutely uh can't let her come and you also cannot say anything your boyfriend has to and your boyfriend also has to be the one to like claim it was his idea not you like it'll make you look bad this is what in the engagement process like it is important to note that like any communication between a bride and the in-laws must go through the husband and be like the husband's original idea. And then the communication between the husband and the in-laws should go through the groom and it should be like the wife, the bride and be like the bride's idea. Like the communication during the engagement process is really delicate. So your husband absolutely has to be the one to break it to his parents that they cannot come. And it has, he can't be like, oh, Sarah said she didn't want you to come and like sell you down the river like okay. Moses. But, but that's what engagements and like planning a wedding and all of these things, it's actually like a trial of, for marriage, you have like micro courses and all these different things, communication, in-laws, finances, mm-hmm. planning, this, that. And it's really a test. And now you're being put to the test. Will you pass? Yeah. We shall see. You can't let this go. Like you absolutely no, no, have no. to what, do something about I, it. I mean, what's the point of going on the honeymoon night with a save your money and stay home and take a check? Like, oh, or you get the family together for like family night and you watch White Lotus and you'd be like, that's crazy. A mom going on someone's honeymoon? That's funny. If, if the other way doesn't work, try that. Or just stay home. Be like, oh, that's my option. I'll stay home. At Thanks least for we the wedding, to, girl. At least we get to have private alone time together. 100%. That's insane, by the way. Insane. Um, okay, we have one more Dear Toasters, and it's brought to you by Modern Fertility. We have always been big fans of planning ahead, scheduling trips, plotting our career moves, figuring out what we're doing for dinner. But we've never, well, I have never given much thought to planning for kids, but that's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. You mail it with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, 
and your other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Traditional testing can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you the same information at a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash toast, you can get $20 off your test. So right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast. That means your test will cost $179 instead of the hundreds or even thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast, modernfertility.com slash toast. All right. Final Dear Toasters is a little lengthy. Hey, Jackson Claude. I'm married to an amazing man and I have the greatest relationship with his parents. They've been so helpful with the baby and are over the moon excited since this is their first grandchild. When it comes to what they want to be called as grandparents, I think it should be up to the child and see what cute nicknames they come up with. Mm. However, my mother-in-law has given herself the name of Mama. She never asked me if I think it's okay and I feel like I'm going crazy that no one else finds it weird. She is now constantly referring to herself in the third person as Mama and she has even gone as far as wearing jewelry that says Mama on it. Every time I hear her say mama, my stomach drops. I've never wanted to be called mommy. I've always preferred the name mama for myself. It's what I call my own mother. I mentioned this a year ago when the conversation was brought up before I was even pregnant, but it seems to be forgotten or ignored. I find it so rude that she is taking the name from me and she doesn't find it strange. I'm losing sleep over this issue and thinking of when my baby starts to speak and their first word will be mama and my mother-in-law will claim that it's about her. She also makes comments about how it's her baby and how the baby just looks like her and my husband. It's like her first grandchild, so I get the obsession, but it's my first baby also, and I feel as though she's taking all of this from me. I feel like I might explode one day, and I don't want to build up resentment. What I want to say is, listen, bitch, I carried this baby for nine months. My body will never be the same. It feeds off of my tits, and I haven't slept in months. I am mama. Say it. I am mama. (laughs) But I hate confrontation more than anything. Wait, sorry. I hate confrontation more than anyone, so that would never happen, but it's how I feel. I do love my mother-in-law, and I see how much joy my child brings her, so I can never say anything to hurt her feelings. I also don't want to make this a big thing by bringing it up to my husband, and I'm worried it would upset him, even though I have a feeling he would agree with me. I just don't want him to think I'm not grateful for his mom, who does so much for us. Please help. Sincerely, she ain't your mama. Blow it up, girl. No, this is another thing. Your husband has to take care of this wench. For sure. And I feel like he might be like, oh, I thought it was weird too, but you didn't say anything. So I thought you were fine with it. This is not okay. This is not acceptable. Not this normal. needs to stop, especially before your baby can actually speak and is confused. Like, who is my mama? Right. Mama is only for the mother. She could be called grandmama if that's what she wants, but you need to put your foot down now. If you really can't find a way, it doesn't have to be confrontational. You don't have to scream at her, but if you can't find a way to voice how you're feeling to her, then tell your husband that he has to do it because if this is making you lose sleep at night, like as new mamas, we have so much on our plate. It's so true. So many things that you worry about as you're falling asleep at night. Yep. You can't also be worried about who does my child think is his mama because my mother-in-law is feeling like, you know, it's she somehow is. No, 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 no. No. And you know what? I'm glad you wrote into us because if you've been experiencing this like on your own, maybe you're not entirely sure you if you're overreacting. But I hope that the very strong reaction Jackie and I have had, and I'm sure people in the comments will have, will empower you to be like, no, no, I'm not crazy. Like I'm justified in being angry. This is psychotic and you must nip this it in the bud. This is psychotic. Psychotic. And Simply. If, if, if even after being spoken to, like she's not accepting, like there is a psycho in your presence. 100%. 100%. Get you, rid of her. Like you- Get rid of her. Also, as a new mama, like if anything is bothering you, even if whether you're justified or not, like it, it has to go. Right. You, Whatever it is, it has to go because you have too much going on, especially like you're breastfeeding. It's can't, you can't tolerate things that are, do not serve you. But this is not even- in our discussion, like, is it okay? Is it not okay? Sort of thing. You're hundred percent justified. Everything you feel is valid. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. Yeah. You say you call yourself mama in my house one more time. It's the last time in my house until the jewelry, until you, until you the jewelry. Like I'm in, like I'm embarrassed. Like embarrassed. I feel shame for her. The jewelry. It feels like she's definitely working out some like unresolved trauma from her youth because this is, this is like seriously like psychotic behavior. Like I say to Harry, like I'm your mom, like as a fucking joke, like I know it's psychotic. Yeah. Wait, did you write this in about me? No. <laughs> no, this is. No. Did you? Okay. Where's your jewelry? That's a good call. Um, this is really like unwell behavior, and you must address it immediately. Your husband specifically, like. 
whatever route is the easiest for you to address it, whether it's a letter in the mail. I don't really, the delivery does not matter here. Just yeah. the message. Agreed, agreed. Message must be received. received. And those were the three Dear Toaster submissions. I would like to thank everyone who wrote in. Um, we, hope you, we hope you helped. I feel like we gave good advice. I feel like we did you also. These were um, morally clear. Yeah. There wasn't like an ambiguity of like what to do. Mm-hmm. So if you want to write in for next week's episode, deartoasters at gmail.com. That is our show. Thank you so much for listening to the Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us. The Morning Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you guys have an amazing Wednesday. Don't forget to hump someone you love, and we'll see you tomorrow for Thursday's episode. Goodbye. Bye.